Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Flat Explain. In this episode I would like to create a hover button with you. But before we get started, if you haven't yet, please subscribe to our channel. And now let's get started. So guys, we are going to create a button like this with a hover animation. I already prepared an empty project for us. At first I will create a stateless widget which I call it button. As next, instead of the container, we will need here a scaffold. I will define the background color. The color will be the background color which we have already in our example. To find the color, I use normally the color zero, which is an extension from Chrome. I copy the color and paste it here. I need here the 0xff. But because we have different colors in our project, I prefer to declare a class, which is going to be the button color here. And I will use in this class the getter method of Dart and define different colors for our project. So I define the background colors, which are going to be the const color and the color which we picked from our example here. So we can access to the default color via the button color class, which we defined. As next, we are going to define the body of our scaffold. In Flutter, we have different options to create the button out of the box. For example, we can use a raise button or a flat button. Now, if I have a look inside of the raise button, I can see that this button is built out of a raw material button. And if we jump again inside of this widget, we can see that this widget is built with a material widget and an NQL widget. So let's create our own animated button with this information. Instead of a raise button, I will replace this one with an animated button widget. And now I will create a stateful widget for the animated button. Our button will have a height, a width, a text and an animated color. And now I will create a constructor and with this I will initialize these different variables that we have. The first one is the height, the width, the text and the last one is the animated color. And now it's time to give to different parameters some values. So the height is going to be 40, the width is 120, the text is, let's have a look here, the text is the emerald, and the color is going again to be in our button colors class that we have. So I will write again a getter method and I will call it as same as the text that we have. So it's going to be the emerald and the color I will get it from the example that we have. So going back to the example and here the green color is this value. I will copy that and go back to our project and paste it here. Now I'm going back to the animated color and we'll use the dot notation to access to the emerald color that I already defined. Perfect. Now it's time to go back to our container widget and set the height and width of the container. The height is going to be the height that we already defined for our widget. We can access to it with the widget dot height and the same going to be also for the width. So widget dot width. And now we are going to define the child widget. The child widget is going to be the material widget and the material widget will have a shape. The shape of this widget is a rounded rectangle border. This widget will have a border radius. This is going to be a circular border with radius of maybe 5. And the last parameter is going to be the size. We will have here border side and this will have a color and a width that we should define. For color I will use for now the emerald color that we already defined. And the width of our border is going to be 2 pixels. We can see now the border on top left corner of our screen. The child of our material widget is an inkwell widget. 
It's important to note that the inquiry widget must have a material widget as an ancestor. Actually, we don't use the untap method here in our example, but we need the untap method to activate our inquiry widget. Otherwise, the unhover method, which we need to use, can't take place as our widget is inactive. I will use an if else statement in our on hover method. And if the user is hovering our button, I will call the set state and change the color border and the color of our text. In the set state, I will change the text color. This is gonna be the white color. And after that, I will change the border color, which gonna be the animated color of our widget. So before I will continue with the else part, let's define the text color and the border color attributes of our class. Both text color and the border color will have the type color. So after we define them, we can go back to the else part. And in the else part, I will at first call the set state again, the text color and the border color both will have the default color which we are going again to define it in the button colors class with the getter method. Now I will go back again to the button colors color and like two other getter methods that I already defined, I will define the default color. Now it's time to call the init state and initialize our text color and the border color. Both of them will have the default color which we already initialized. Now I will continue to define the child of our inkwell widget. The child is a container and the child of our container will be a stack widget. The background color of our container will be the same as our background color. So I will set the color and after that I will define the child. As I said, the child of our container is a stack. And with this, we can overlap different children in our stack widget. At first, we need a container which will have the task for the background animation. So the decoration of our container is going to be a box decoration. And in the box decoration, I will set the color to the animation color that we have. And the next parameter is the border radius. I will use the same border radius as we had for our container in the previous widget. So the circular radius is going to be again the 5. Now it's time to bring our button in the middle. So I will wrap the container with the center widget. The last widget in our widget 3 is the animated default text style. This widget would help us to animate our text in the given duration. The duration is here 300 millisecond. I will define the style of our text. The color is going to be the text color that we already defined in our widget. And after that, the child of our widget is a text widget and the text will get it from our widget. And the last but not least, we have to define the curve. The curves are going to be here, the is in. And at the end, I will wrap our widget in a center widget to bring the text in the middle of our button. Finally, it's time to bring some animation in our project. We need two attributes. The first one is an animation controller and the second one is an animation. Perfect. Now I will initialize these both attributes. The first one is the controller. The controller is an animation controller. Our animation controller needs a ticker provider, which is configured with the vsync argument in our constructor. Now I will get the error that I need a ticker provider. Because we will have only one ticker, I will use here the single ticker provider state mix in. After that, I will set the duration for our animation, which is going to be the duration millisecond and I will give it, for example, 600 millisecond. Perfect. Now I will initialize our animation. Our animation is a tween object and I will call the animate method. Our tween object will have two parameters, begin and the end. 
the begin is zero and the end gonna be for example 500 and after that with that notation I will call the animate method for our animation I will use the curved animation and for the curves I will use again the is in like the animation for our text we need to still one more parameter which is the parent and the parent is going to be our controller which we already defined the last thing that I have to do is to call the add the listener which is avoid callback I will do that with the casket notation of dart and after that in the add the listener I will call the set state again as next, I should set the width of our container, which is responsible for the background animation of our button. The width is the value of our animation. Now, if I hover on the button, nothing will happen. This is because I missed something. In the if-else statement, I should still do something. I should call the controller and call the forward method in the if statement and the in the else part I should call the reverse method and now if I save it and hover on the button it should work now the problem is that our animation starts from the left side and go to the right side but this is not what we want we want that the, our animation start from the middle of the button therefore I should wrap our container in its center widget and after that the animation will work perfectly there is still one last thing that we should set up and this is the border animation. So I will create this attribute in our class and after that I will initialize it in the init state. For this animation I will use the color train. In color train we have two parameters. The begin parameter is going to be our default color and the end parameter will be our animation color. Like our animation, I will call now the animate method and inside of that I will use the curve animation. For the curve parameter, I will use the curve that is in out and the parents gonna be again our controller. And now is finally the time to use the border animation in our widget. So I will replace the color of the border side with the value of the border animation that we create. And now I have to restart our application and we can see that when I hover the button, we can see the animation in the background color in the text of the button and also in the border. Amazing guys, we made it! Just before I forget it, an animation controller should be disposed when we don't need it anymore. Therefore, I will write an override annotation here and call the dispose method and after that I will dispose our controller. Now I would like to create a column with six buttons out of the button widget that we created together. And after that bring it in a flutter pen. I will do it in a speed code and I will be back in a second. guys for watching this video. I hope you like it. If you have any other code pen example that you want me to cover in Flutter, please leave a comment below and stay tuned until the next time.